You're watching Plant Identification Through Personal Investigation with Angeline Whitmire. This plant portrait is for Oxeye Daisy, Leucanthemum vulgare. Most of us notice Oxeye Daisy when it's blooming during the summer. It now grows throughout North America as a naturalized plant originally from Eurasia. Oxeye daisy can be found in open fields and other sunny locations, such as along the sides of roadways. There's usually an initial flush of blooms, followed by those flowers dying back to make their seeds. More flowers develop and bloom during subsequent weeks, after the initial mass of flowers. Eventually, all the flowers become seed heads. The flower stalks die back. The basal leaves remain for a while longer before dying. Meanwhile, new plants sprout at the base of the older plants, from rhizomes. When cold weather develops, oxide daisy retreats, but does not die. Leaf edges can turn brown, or the entire leaf may turn shades of yellow, red, or yellow-green. When temperatures rise in late winter, before it's officially spring, you can find tiny new oxide daisy plants. These are from the previous year's seeds, which were blown away from the parent plant. Temperatures warm, and the newer small plants, along with the older plants from last year, fill out with new leaves. Oxide daisy grows lush with its basal rosette. Finally, during late spring, a flower stalk begins to grow from the center of the plant. Leaves grow along the purple-tinged stalk as it rises higher. Flower buds form at the top of the stalks. A closer look at a developing flower bud nestled in the leaves. The flower stalk extends higher and the leaves along the stalk spread further apart. The sepals pull back from the budding flower, and the flower gently opens, becoming the familiar daisy, white flowers with yellow centers. Let's look more closely at the flowers. Oxide daisy actually grows flower heads. Each head contains numerous disc flowers, or florets, which are the yellow center of the flower head and a set of white ray florets surrounding the disc florets. Here are some close-up views of the yellow disc florets. Observe how the rings of florets bloom from the outermost edge of the flower head toward the innermost center. This accounts for a field guide description of depression at center of the flower. The depression would be the disc florets which have not yet bloomed. Likewise, the florets die in the same sequence, from the outer edge toward the center of the disc. The white ray florets also die. As all the fertilized florets begin their transformation to seeds. The seeds are tiny and easily dispersed by wind. Oxide daisy has dark green leaves with an interesting shape. I guess you could say that each leaf is deeply lobed. In fact, field guides describe the leaf as coarsely toothed or pinnately lobed, or even as cleft. They look like they have only one central vein. During winter, the leaves are shorter and have more of an overall spatula shape. They also become relatively thicker, probably to survive cold temperatures. Oxide daisy's first leaves grow low to the ground in a rosette. From above, they look like a spiral arrangement, especially as the flower stalk begins to grow from the plant's center. The leaves alternate along the flower stalk. The stalk has angles with dark purple highlighting the ridges. As it grows taller and stronger to support the flower head, the stalk's dark purple fades from the ridges until it looks like a stiff green leafless stalk 
with a single flower head. This is Angelin. Thank you for watching and learning about Leucanthemum vulgare, also known as oxeye daisy. Visit identifythatplant.com for more images of oxeye daisy, for plant identification resources, and for information about how you can confidently master the skill of correct plant identification.